Now, video guys, live webinar. Today we are talking about the PTZ Optics fourth generation IP or serial joystick, as well as some other really cool controllers from PTZ Optics, and some news on NDI. So it's going to be an awesome show. We have Paul Richards from PTZ Optics and Stream Geeks joining us. Definitely stick around and let's roll the bump and get into the show. All right, and welcome to the Video Guys live webinar. If you missed the pre-show, I am Oliver from Video Guys filling in for Gary Batan, who is on vacation this week. But I'm not alone this week. I'm actually joined by Paul Richards from PTZ Optics. Paul, how you doing? Up. Oh, and let's see, Paul, one more time. How you doing over there? Hi, Oliver. Thanks for having me today. Awesome, awesome. So I'm really excited about the show today because uh, you've actually announced something really exciting and that is the fourth generation uh, PTZ Optics joystick. And in front of me here, Adam, if we could pop this up full screen, you can see the full family of PTZ Optics controllers, including the serial joystick at 329, the PT joystick G4 at 604, and the Superjoy at 989. So, Paul, tell us a little bit about these controllers and what makes this new controller so special. Yeah, so we now have basically a serial joystick at a very low budget, entry level uh, budget. We now have the Gen 4, which incorporates so much of what our customers have been asking for in the PT Joy Gen 4. Lots of new features. Um, we're going to talk all about them today. But this is the workhorse. Right? It doesn't have everything that we included in really the industry's most powerful joystick, the Super Joy, but it does have a lot of the awesome features that, that most of our customers want, and we're able to put that in the work, workhorse kind of economical price point uh, that, it, that it's available at. That's awesome. And, uh, and I also want to say we, we love the Super Joy uh, here, and we're very excited to get our hands on the G4. Um, so... Really excited to talk about some of the key differences here. Um, and you can see them here on this chart, but we're really going to dive into it with, um, let's start with first what a PTZ controller is and why do you need a PTZ controller in your setup? Because there are lots of different, and maybe some new users streaming now, as opposed to if we would have done this show about a year ago. Um, and some people who are just getting into some bigger productions, maybe they've done PTZ cameras before, but they haven't used two or three PTZ cameras at a time, or maybe they just prefer a more tactile feel to their controller versus something on screen that's a touch screen. And there are a lot of really great controllers that have a ton of awesome features to kind of automate your production. So, Paul, what do you think about all of that? Well, um, first of all, I mean, when you have a PTZ camera, you have the ability to remotely control it. So you can control it from anywhere, usually in your local area network, meaning you can use a smartphone, you mm -hmm. can use your computer, you can use OBS or vMix or Wirecast or the new tech TriCaster, Livestream Studio, the list goes kind of goes on and on. It's amazing that a PTZ camera can be controlled by, you know, tons of different options. But as you become you know, more proficient and you start to learn about live streaming, you realize that it's really nice to have a dedicated PTZ camera operator. Mm -hmm. And in that case, we generally like to give that person a joystick controller that is dedicated to that purpose. And they might have two cameras. They might have six cameras. They're very flexible. They might have Circa Soleil in Las Vegas has 25 cameras. Wow. Uh, that they're using with PTZ optics. And the beauty with even just one or two PTZ cameras is that a single PTZ camera can be used to capture multiple angles throughout a space. And so you combine that awesome robotic control capabilities of a PTZ camera with a dedicated joystick controller, uh, you get some really amazing results that look great on a live stream. They're professional on a video recording. And it really starts to make video content come alive. Yeah, and what I'm hearing here is also that there's, there's a piece for every production of every size, right? So if you're just starting with a couple cameras and you want that, 
you want to just get into a PTZ controller, maybe you'll start with the serial controller and say you want, you have, you know, a massive amount of cameras. Now maybe I want to move over to the Superjoy where I can get a little bit more control, you know, and even if you're not in controllers, PTZ cameras are still a great thing to have. There's, uh, you know, a ton of different ways to control them uh, depending on who's mixing. So these are really great things to add to your production and add a little bit of value. So moving into the new controller, the fourth generation IP controller at $604. Paul, tell us a little bit about this puppy. And I know that you have it set up in the studio as well. So let's take a look at it. Yeah. So I've got this uh, PT Joy G4 set up right here. And one of the things straight out of the box that's really nice about this camera is not only can I control cameras, this is a serial connected camera on this side, mm -hmm. but by holding down the main button here, I can switch between serial and network control and switch to an NDI camera that's controlled over an ethernet connection. So that is unique in, because there are many people who might have a few new PTZ optics cameras with NDI capabilities, but they might have some older, maybe Sony or Panasonic cameras that don't have network connectivity and they support serial connections. So right out of the box, that's a really great option. We've also totally redone a lot of the buttons and knobs here to get you the six quick camera selects here. There's a new basic mode that's designed just for volunteers or folks who are just getting in to camera control. So totally redesigned, but it also has an entire IP interface as well, which allows you to set everything up directly through a web browser interface. So it saves you time during setup if you're using this in multiple productions. And again, this is the workhorse model. So it's got everything you need built in here. And it even works with camera, uh, ca cameras from other manufacturers. I, I definitely love that. That adds a ton of flexibility, first of all, to be able to mix and match that network source versus the serial. So if you have some older cameras, they're, not, they're still valuable to your production and you can still mix them and have everything play nicely together. And the other thing I want to highlight that you said there is the, the online UI to customize your cameras and have a quick setup. That's super valuable, especially to a lot of our customers that want to jump in and have control and don't want a really long setup process. So definitely kudos to you and your team for that because I think that's an awesome feature. Now, Thank you. Yeah, we're really excited about it. Oh, go ahead. I mean to cut no, you no, off. No, go ahead. Um, now, another great controller in your, your wheelhouse is the Superjoy, um, which we were very, very excited about when it first came out. Um, it can control a, a lot of different cameras. You can make preset control on here is outstanding. The amount of stuff you can do with the Superjoy is really incredible and one of the things I really like about it is that you can control cameras from not only PTZ Optics cameras which we'll do right now but also I can quickly and easily switch over and say I have a new tech camera or a bird dog PTZ camera well I can control that too I can build my presets and they don't even have to be the same protocol is that correct Paul? Yeah, so the Superjoy has meant to be really flexible, and that's why we even went as far as building NDI camera support, which opens up a huge number of manufacturers that support the NDI camera control protocol. So we, we support our own Visca control, which for PTZ optics cameras opens up every single button, every single feature, everything's perfect for PTZ optics. But any cameras that work with Sony Visca like Bird Dog, like New Tech, like many others, that uh, that will work. And then the NDI protocol opens up a whole nother door of new possibilities for camera control. Absolutely, and I also want to point out this was not difficult to set up. We did this this morning as we were getting ready for the show. It, as far as controllers go, this is fairly plug and play, very straightforward. Super easy setup and you're going to be able to get it to do exactly what you want it to do, which, you know, time is valuable to people and this is an awesome way to add some power and, you know, not set yourself back with a, with a big setup. Um, you know, and, and I want to talk about what are some of the main differences between the Superjoy and the G4 controller? 
Yeah, so this it, uh, going through this, Oliver, really goes will help us get through everything and give us a good example of the differences here. Mm-hmm. Uh, why don't you take it full screen? Because I'm going to read off the monitor if that's okay. Absolutely. Uh, first of all, the Superjoy allows us to mix and match serial and IP cameras, whereas the Gen 4, it can do serial cameras or IP cameras, but you have to switch the modes like I did with that button there earlier on in our show. So the Superjoy is a little bit more flexible um, because you can mix and match multiple cameras and then you can have camera groups. Mm -hmm. Um, If you're using an NDI camera, the Superjoy is uh, where you want to go with that because the PT Joy G4, again, workhorse, economical, does not have the NDI functionality. One of the best features of the Superjoy that people rant and rave about is the HDMI video output from the joystick. So if you have a network connection, you can power the Superjoy over power over Ethernet and plug HDMI into your monitor. And no matter what camera you go to, you've got a live video preview feed in low latency. So the Superjoy customers really love that feature. The PT Joy G4 does not have an HDMI output, although it is they are both power over Ethernet capable, which is great for network deployment. And, and that goes back into what we were saying before, is that the size of your production is also going to determine what kind of controller you're really going with. If that feature is really valuable to you, then the Superjoy is definitely the way to go. But that doesn't make the G4 not an awesome controller that has a ton of capability, even just to be able to control IP, uh, network, and then serial. Uh, you just have to know the process and what the capability of the controller is. Yeah, and let's remember, Oliver, there's still many of many productions that do not have networks yet. Um, <laughs> and so the serial joystick's only $300. And so, you know, maybe that's where you want to go with a budget production that doesn't have any uh, network connectivity. For those of us that do have network connectivity, which is becoming the majority, uh, the Superjoy or the PT Joy both support serial and network. And there's a large mixture, as you said, of folks who are supporting serial today moving to the IP networking of the future, and this joystick really fits in that that space well. And moving to the future doesn't mean that you're leaving all of your old gear behind either. You're still able to use your serial cameras. It's not a full upgrade. You're going bit by bit. So if you're in a house of worship or you're in a school and you only have so much in the budget, one of these pieces is really great to use because now I I have the power of my old cameras and I still have the flexibility to move up to new cameras and new equipment. So, Paul, I know you have... This diagram really shows it. Absolutely. So, I know you have the Superjoy in there, and we're going to get into that in just a minute, but tell me a little bit about this setup with the Superjoy. And, Adam, if we could go full screen on it. Yeah, so this is showing on the left-hand side the fact that you can do serial cameras, but also a lot of people don't realize maybe uh, initially that serial cameras can be daisy chain, And mm-hmm. that makes cabling actually a lot easier. If you've got four or five cameras that are going in a line, you can just go from one to the next, whereas with IP cameras, it's a benefit most of the time, but not always. Each IP camera needs to be network connected back to a centralized switch generally. But the nice thing about the network connectivity, obviously, is the power over Ethernet. Uh, But looking at this, we've got the serial cameras. We've got the IP cameras, meaning Visca over IP. We have Sony cameras, NDI cameras. We're also showing a Wi-Fi connection because these joysticks are network connected. They actually support control over a smartphone or a tablet by typing in the IP address of the device. Um, We're also showing a UDP connection, which is ideal for controlling cameras remotely over the internet. And that is going to be a lot more popular, Oliver, especially with NDI 5.0 and the NDI Bridge, which is going to be available very soon. Uh, Being able to control NDI sources anywhere in the world uh, is a big deal. And that's not going to support just camera control. But with NDI, we have Kali Light, we have metadata. There's a lot of great stuff, PTZ control and video and audio. Uh, over the public internet is going to be incredible. But just to finish, uh, HTTP commands there. We didn't talk about that yet, but the Superjoy features four custom buttons. Mm-hmm. And those custom buttons allow you to control, send HTTP or TCP commands over your network. So we're showing an Epifan Pearl Nano 
being controlled, and that's a, a nice way to maybe start a recording remotely or control a black magic device, for example. And then we're also showing vMix and OBS uh, being controlled as well from your SuperJoy PTZ controller, allowing your volunteers or your, your joystick operators to just do more, right? And then like we use it here. Here's a, a really quick example, Oliver, of a custom butt on the SuperJoy working. Let's say you've got five PTZ cameras, all right? And they all are in different PTZ positions. Okay, so you have stage one, and then you have, okay, stage two. Or, you know, this is happening now, and then this happens in the future. Well, what you can do is you can set one custom button to call five PTZ cameras to move at the same time. Not only is that good for scene changes on a, in a theater or any type of production, but if, you're, if you have a volunteer at a church or a different organization operating a bunch of PTZ cameras, who knows where they're going to leave those PTZ cameras? But if you have the super joy, you hit custom button one, whoop, all the cameras go back to a known position, and you've just saved yourself the setup of having to move five cameras back to whatever the normal state was. And that's an awesome feature. You know, even with presets, we're already a really great thing uh, for volunteer-based productions like a house of worship or a church. Um, but when you have a volunteer, the stakes are much lower for them. They're not setting your equipment back to where it started. And a lot of times they won't really know how to do some of the more intricate features. So by you making these custom buttons and making that so easy for them, that's a really great thing. And that adds a ton of value. And we can see it right there in front of you. And actually, Paul, I'm going to ask you another question. What are the additional buttons on the SuperJoy for? Yeah, let me, let me take a quick peek at these. So, so, I mean, this is our premier joystick, and there's a lot of buttons that you don't find on any other joysticks. One right here, which I'm a big fan of, is all the individual pan, tilt, and zoom, and focus speed, mm -hmm. and preset speeds. Sometimes you have to dig into a menu to find, all right, I want this camera to go a little slower or a little faster when I'm panning, tilting, and zooming, and even focus speeds. And another one, Oliver, that a lot of people don't think about is the speed between presets. So PTZ cameras are popular because you can have all these different cool PTZ presets, but when they zip back and forth from one to the next, it doesn't look good. It's not, it doesn't work good on camera. So if you want to slow that down real quick and have a preview of what the speed's going to be, then you feel a lot more comfortable. Okay, I'm going to call preset two or preset three, but I want it to move nice and slowly in between these multiple points. Other than that, we've got some really nice knobs for focus and zoom that are really fine tuned you know when you want to get that focus just right or you just want to zoom in a little tiny bit uh, of course we've got the whole joystick over here um, and then some of the additional buttons that a lot of people are, are really liking the basic mode again for volunteers here and then the matrix mode which let's say you've got to leave the joystick um, but you're still connected to wi-fi you can go into matrix mode and you can pull that up on your smartphone and you can control up to three cameras with three presets each. So very cool way to take this controller and go, go further with it. Absolutely. And I also, while we're looking at the SuperJoy, I do want to point out this thing is, it's got such a nice build. It's sturdy, hard metal. This feels like a really nice piece to have in your production as well. Uh, in addition to all of the great capabilities with all of those buttons. So awesome awesome controller and while we're talking about you know network workflows um i also want to point out um ndi5 paul you just created a really great resource about ndi in general so before we go into this um we had a copy of your book here in the studio but gary actually uh, stole it and took it on vacation so our copy is somewhere in the Bahamas. So, Paul, can you tell us a little bit about your book, The Unofficial Guide to NDI? Yeah, so this is The Unofficial Guide to NDI. It's now available completely for free download. It's got over 20 chapters of learning about NDI from the absolute basics of what is a network, what's a local area network, what's an IP address, all the way to NDI 5 and the latest tools that are being uh, uh, released and have made available for free from NDI, but also integrations and examples, right? Real world examples with OBS, with vMix, showing how does NDI work? What are the real world examples? How do we use these tools? We created a complete book here. The, the forward is by Dr. Andrew Cross from NDI, from BizRT. 
and it just goes over every NDI tool in depth. I know a lot of folks out there that like to learn by reading a book. I mean, it's the best way to digest and fully understand the future of IP video. There's also an online course that's included, so you can read all about it, really conceptualize what's happening, how is the industry changing, and then what is the future, and then go ahead and download these free tools, use it yourself, understand how IP video and the NDA tools can change your next IP video project, and then, you know, if you'd like, take the online course and really dig along and work work with me as through that course and really become go from kind of like maybe a beginner, maybe somebody who's just getting started with NDI to someone who has a really good foundational uh, uh, education on on NDI and what it can do for you. Yeah, and I definitely want to say, first of all, that a, a book is a really great resource to have for people of all levels because your book covers, first of all, getting started with NDI and the basics of what it is, so people who are just jumping in have something to consume that they you know, can, can walk away and feel like they really took some knowledge out of that. But even if you've been using NDI for a while, you have information on what's happening next, NDI 5, what the future is going to be. And I also want to say that course, that's going to be really valuable as well because the more people are taking courses, NDI is decently new. When people are taking courses and really familiarizing themselves at that level, they're setting themselves apart from the crowd who's just learning it because we're all learning it at the same time. But if you have that edge of taking something like a course from an expert like yourself, you're, you've set yourself apart and you're, you know, you're better than the herd. And I think that that's an awesome, awesome resource that a lot of people should be taking advantage of. Thanks. Yeah, we're very excited for it to be available for free downloads so you can print it out yourself and read it. And then we're going to be releasing all the NDI videos on our YouTube channel so that everyone can get, it, get um, them as freely available. Absolutely. And speaking of NDI, uh, NDI 5 recently just uh, was announced. And uh, there's going to be a ton of really great features coming with it. Um, right now, you can get on the waiting list at NDI.tv. And of course, there'll be a link to that in the description, as well as a link to where to find Paul's book. Um, but Paul, what do you see NDI 5 doing for productions with NDI PTZ cameras, and what do you think that means for the industry as a whole? Yeah, I'm very excited about NDI 5, and there's actually a few, uh, three or four chapters specifically with the new NDI tools. I'll just kind of read off a couple of these for you. Um, NDI Remote, NDI Bridge, and NDI Audio Direct are the three new tools that are very exciting for anyone who's either developing NDI applications or just using NDI. I wrote the book so people, as you said, can get caught up because NDI 4.0 was a big deal, right? NDI 1, 2, and 3, folks are still understanding all, all the benefits, but NDI 5 takes NDI from something that's really just used on the local area network and expands it over the wide area network where you can send and receive video from anywhere in the world with very minimal networking knowledge. And that's what makes this so powerful, Oliver. And it's also why I'm excited why we can hand our, our colleagues, our peers, our partners, a book like NDI, the unofficial guide to NDI and say, hey, if you understand this, NDI makes it so simple to send video anywhere in the world from a production standpoint. I'll start with NDI Bridge. NDI Bridge basically is an application it's almost like a peer-to-peer -peer connection between two local area networks. It bridges them together so that the NDI video feeds from one location are available as if they were in the second location over the public internet. Now, yes, there's going to be a little bit of latency, but NDI really reduces the latency and it provides all of the tools that you would need to seamlessly integrate the NDI video just like it would be on your local area network. So meaning, a PTZ optics camera, an NDI PTZ optics camera on one side of a network can be controlled with the SuperJoy or an IP connected um, system on the other side. So that's where that SuperJoy comes into play, right? Because it has the NDI functionality to control these sources that might not be in your studio. They might be on the other side of the world. And we're seeing this IP uh, video kind of just revolutionize the way video production is happening it also integrates with Tally, right? So if I'm controlling a camera in New York and the camera's actually in Los Angeles, 
when I bring that into my video production software, the talent in Los Angeles is going to see the tally light turn on. They're going to know what's happening via NDI. You're going to be able to control that camera remotely, view the video remotely. NDI Bridge is incredible. The other two are NDI Remote and NDI Audio Direct, which I can also comment on as well. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I want to talk about that, too, because with, last year, with, with so many people being quarantined and being separate, video took and live streaming especially took a front seat in a way that it really hadn't before. And a lot of these workflows where you can control a studio across the world, a lot of us were here scratching our heads, figuring out how to pull it off. And I think NDI 5 is really the answer. You know, it's going to change the way that a lot of live streaming is done, how we're staying connected, and you know, what, what live production is in the first place. Um, so we're very, very excited about that here. Um, you know, and, and it, this is a great time for somebody to jump into an NDI workflow, get familiar with the technology as things are changing, as exciting things are happening, and try to perfect it a little bit. Now, Paul, yeah, I agree. I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just saying I agree. Absolutely. Now, Paul, for you know, users like um, educators who are jumping in, say they're making their budget now for next year, you know, video and live streaming and especially PTZ cameras and controllers really have a great place in education, in lecture capture, in hybrid learning scenarios. So can you tell us a little bit about uh, some of the opportunities these people have now with federal grant money and, and how to build out their budget to incorporate video in the coming year. Yeah, I'm happy to. And this is something where we really want you guys to follow Video Guys and PTZ Optics because we have hired a third party grant writer to research all of the educational and um, government, state and local government municipality grants that are available today for live streaming technology upgrade project. And it's, it's a great way. There's such a great amount of funding available today if you just apply for it. All you really need to do for a lot of these grants is show that you have a real plan. Show that, that you, can, you have a way to use the live streaming, video recording, or video communication equipment to enhance what you're doing, whether that's from an educational standpoint and you're doing distance learning or lecture capture systems for to increase the educational capabilities of your organization, or maybe that's for a state and local government where your municipality needs to be able to share the messages from their meetings and their new ordinances that they are trying to share with the public from a state or local government area. So much funding so that the PTZ Optics has gone out and hired a third party grant writer. We have two upcoming webinars, one that focuses specifically on education and all of the different uh, funding that has just been approved. And then another one for state municipalities. Both of those are coming in July and August, and there will be a downloadable handout, which has all of the information of the specific grants you can apply for. And we'll have a Q&A with a grant writer who can answer tech-specific questions and provide some success stories where you know PTZ cameras and other live streaming gear has been awarded funding for projects that's available today. It's a great opportunity for anybody to uh, download those, those downloadable documents and get started with applying for grant funding and be successful when you do so. Absolutely. And, you know, Video Guys and PTZ Optics are here to help you along the way. So I, I want to stress, make sure that you're following. Paul makes a ton of really great resources between PTZ Optics on YouTube and Stream Geeks and uh, also very contactable if, if you're trying to work something out, as well as uh, give us a call over at Video Guys at 1-800-323-2325, and we can definitely help you out, get to talking, and let's make something happen for the next year, because this is a, a unique opportunity in the way that video is taking the front seat, and, uh, and for our educators to be in the front of that is really exciting. Now, I also want to talk about, you know, new things as well. We're on the topic of, uh, of education. Uh, 
it, what people going back to school in person, there's pro AV in the classroom, lecture capture, digital signage, and of course video conferencing took a really big front seat last year as well in education. So Paul, what is the place of a PTZ Optics camera and controller in that workflow and where do you see all of this going? Yeah, so I mean, when we're talking about professional audiovisual integration, um, you know, many professional audiovisual integrators are working with educational organizations to equip classrooms and educational campuses really to have digital signage, to have the ability to share and communicate and deliver all types of different media. Um, so it's a really, it's a big question, Oliver. Um, but I'll start in education. I mean, obviously, Zoom has been a really big um, part of the growth in education for connecting students who are maybe taking remote classes. And uh, we have you know, Zoom just announced NDI support uh, for their Zoom rooms, and I'm very excited about that. PTZ cameras in sp specifically are being used in classrooms. A lot of classrooms are doing two PTZs at least. Um, and, and there's a lot of different reasons. They're just so versatile. I'll show you a full screen um, shot of an over overhead camera. I mean, this is an educational ability for teachers to show things remotely, but then use the same camera maybe in a different position. That's where, why PTZ cameras are so flexible. And again, connecting that to Zoom, connecting that to a lecture capture recording system, these capabilities have become so popular at NDI specifically as well, making it easier to implement PTZ cameras, especially with NDI HX, with the high efficiency version for campus networks or larger networks uh, where they want to try to start maybe using IP video. Um, now that NDI is supporting it, I see that becoming, or sorry, Zoom is supporting NDI I see that, and Microsoft Teams. I see that becoming really popular right now as a way to distribute video content uh, on a local area network, on a campus network from an educational perspective. And then in the pro AV side of things, it's just making their job easier, right? Budgets are becoming lower because we can now run a single ethernet cable to a camera and power that camera, control that camera, get video from that camera. So um, it, everything that's happening right now, Oliver, is like 2.0. Mm -hmm. Like last year, we were really trying to at least video enable each space if possible. Now we're really thinking through which manufacturers do we buy from? PTZ Optics has a five-year warranty. You know, that, that's an important feature for a lot of our customers who are trying to get set up for success and have a future-proof solution where their you know, classrooms, whether it's classrooms or courtrooms or conference rooms, uh, they just want to get it to work. They want to invest today and they want it to work for the next decade. Absolutely. And something that we say here on this show all the time is that last year in 2020, we, there was an urgent need and we made live streaming work uh, for people who were not doing it yet, for people who were still working on it. That was the year that we made things happen and, uh, and live streaming came to the forefront. We made it work. 2021 is about perfecting and making streaming easier and better and more accessible at a higher level. Um, so, and I think all of that feeds really well into what you were just talking about. And I also want to, uh, to talk about really quick, you mentioned the NDI feature in Zoom. So let's talk about the NDI output in Zoom rooms and talk to me a little bit about this feature because you created a, an awesome video of it. We're gonna put that in the description. Um, tell me a little bit about this feature and where you see it in the landscape. Yes, so you know Microsoft Teams supports NDI outputs. I think we're using that now, actually, for yes, this sir. live stream and this video, um, which is awesome. And, and, and Microsoft Teams has had that for a while, and this is one of those things that Zoom is almost playing catch-up on with Microsoft Teams. But Zoom has now uh, introduced NDI output for the Zoom rooms. You can have three NDI outputs. So what this allows organizations that have Zoom rooms to do is to have a, a live streaming space, have a production space, and it truly helps us kind of come to the vision that anyone can be a content creator, right? So, you know, you go to University of Southern California, these big organizations, they've got hundreds, even thousands of Zoom rooms set up for students to collaborate and share and connect with people all around the world. Well, now those very Zoom rooms can be used to produce a live stream or a production or a higher quality production by using the NDI output from that Zoom room and a student can now use Wirecast 
Femix, OBS, which is totally free, all kinds of NDI-enabled workflows can now work on the same network that the school has. Or that could also be the same in corporate. You know, if you go to the Uber headquarters in San Francisco, they, again, have hundreds of Zoom rooms. Those people can now learn how to use any video production software or work with a studio or a studio professional like yourself to create great videos, but using a Zoom room, this familiar creation space that already has a camera and a microphone. So this is a game changer for any organization that is standardized on Zoom or uses Zoom predominantly, uh, which is a very long <laughs> list of people, as you can imagine, Oliver. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, with Zoom becoming so prominent uh, only recently, it, it's a mainstay. And in, in when we're talking about education, you'd be hard pressed now to find a teacher that's not already familiar with those tools. So this plays very much into what we're talking about with making video easier and better and making live streaming more of a commonplace tool that people know how to use and know how to leverage that power. You know, and I think everything we've talked about here really plays into that message. So, Paul, I want to thank you for a really great show. Uh, as always, you've come on here and given us a ton of information to think about and consider. Um, and, Paul, where can people find you? Well, you can find me at PTZ Optics, but you can also find us at Stream Geeks, which is where we post a lot of the things that aren't PTZ cam related, but industry streaming related. Uh, so you can find me at either of those places, or you can email me at paul.richards at ptzoptics.com. Absolutely. And if you're looking to learn a little bit more about this controller or any of the PTZ Optics cameras or uh, any of the great things we've talked about today, certainly feel free to give us a call at 1-800-323-2325. If you dial extension 1111, you'll reach me directly, or extension 1119 to reach Adam, who is mixing the show. Um, and... Absolutely subscribe to Video Guys on YouTube, like us on Facebook, follow our Instagram. We're really posting a lot there now uh, just to stay up to date on what's happening. Our mission here is to educate and make sure that everybody is informed and that we're all learning live streaming the best we can and utilizing that technology together. So until next week, folks, I am Oliver from Video Guys. Signing off, we'll be back every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Paul, thank you for a great show, and uh, bye, everybody. Thank you for watching this week's Video Guys Live webinar. We go live every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time to our Facebook and YouTube pages with the latest news on live streaming, video editing, and video storage technology. Join us next week for a great webinar talking about some storage solutions from SanDisk Professional. Video Guys is available Monday through Friday. Give us a call at 1-800-323-2325. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram to stay connected with all of our updates. And you can like us on Facebook. Keep an eye out for our live videos and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.